in the world that engages in democratic elections, that make candidates sign uh, this accord. Huh? If we are not at war, why are we signing this accord? It means that elections in Nigeria are basically war. And if we recognize that, maybe it doesn't make sense to ask or debate these two elections. We should be debating elections during the periods of war. And it's also true that Nigeria is somehow at war with the citizens, at war against itself. The political class is also at war against Nigerians. Don't let everybody deceive you about it. I'm about the only candidate running this election who doesn't walk around with at least some 40 policemen armed to the teeth. Some have DSS, police, they have army, they may be a group, what we see, uh, some of them have Boko Haram in their security units because they are willing to win war at the slightest provocation against anybody. Sometimes you can't even blame some of them. It is also very dangerous to run for office at any level in Nigeria. You guys were aware of the Liberal Party candidate that was kidnapped and will not be found to today, I think in the Anambra election. Yesterday in Kaduna, a Liberal Party female leader, woman leader, was assassinated. They are signaling that the war is about to start. When we went for the last uh, events, peace accord, the most violent parties, or the most violent party in the land, the APC, did not send their presidential candidates because they didn't want to be on record as signing a peace accord when he doesn't believe in peace. That's the truth. And to talk about peaceful elections and also discuss elections, peace, uh, we cannot uh, also not discuss it within the context of our economic problems. Why do people buy books? Why do people sell books? Number one is that there's poverty in the land. To the extent that uh, what I make issues to people, which is that the PDC, is interpreted by the majority of our citizens as a poverty of education card. That's what you carry in your hand. And whenever you approach to lessen that poverty, by getting paid, you engage in the economic transaction of selling your goods. But what selling is not limited to the streets alone. The major political parties start selling goods by ensuring that they nominate onto INEC their own members who help them secure some advantage over other candidates. For instance, the APC has the highest number of uh, national officers in any of today, Madam, you don't have to panic. Uh, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to INEC, which is your organization. Anything you hear from me today, your chairman has said it from me. The IG of police has said it from me. The DG of DSS has said it from me. All the security agencies have heard it from me. So this poverty that is ravaging the country has made people to sell and mortgage their future and conscience. Because most people honestly in Nigeria don't know where their next meal will come from. According to statistics released by the Nigerian government itself, over 120 million, 133 million Nigerians have been pushed into extreme poverty. There are 93 million registered voters. As of today, INEC has not told us out of that 93 million people. How many of them have PVC, the Property Verification Card, or the Permanent Voters Card, as you like to call them? They said they are still pulling up their records. You know, those records are contained like a Jackson, Tyson, and Rihanna. I think has all of them on their voters' 
So they claim they are cleaning it up. So let's believe that that will happen. The second reason is, of course, corruption. Our elections are some of the most corruptly conducted in the world. We must admit that. Uh, I participated. Is it 20 minutes? No, no. Continue, sir. I participated in 2019 in what they call an election, and I can tell you categorically that I swore to this one now that there was no election in 2019. They allocated to me like 3,000 votes by hand, and then they selected the candidate that won, uh, Harry. In reality, if you look at the record of that election, truthfully, I believe that Atiku won the election in 2019. That's my belief. Uh, I was not allowed to count the ballot if I was clamped into jail in August of 2019. I spent five months. By the time I came out of jail, they have sworn in the person they claim won the election. The man is still there now. There is also a historical dimension to election my practices in Nigeria. Since independence, there is virtually no election in Nigeria that has been held. Even before independence by the British that were free and fair. So Nigeria has a historical tie with wrong elections. The, the, I think there was a census that was done also around independence. That census was also read by the British. So the British authorities that handed Nigeria over to our own local internal colonizers were the ones who started rigging. So they fear to all these rigors that we have over the place now. Uh, the other factor is the number of people within the political class that the class who are both the law and there are plenty of them who can categorically go out there and rig elections and expect no consequences for doing it. There are some of these uh, election riggers who every year actually get national awards from the Nigerian government. In the days of Anambra, there's a fellow called Chief Chris Mumba. They adopted a government, a serving government. Almost killed him. And the following year, President Ushako Obasso just gave him a national award. If you look at the list of national award winners since 1999, they are mostly election riggers and corrupt individuals in Nigeria. Another problem is the internal officer that I might use it now. Most of them are university professors. I like to say that you cannot prosecute people who buy goods and also sell goods. But at least they can blacklist the name of their own officers who engage outrightly with impunity in announcing rigged elections. And most of them are university professors. There was one that was caught by an INEC officer who is now being removed, Mike McGinney, in Aquaibon State. He was sentenced to jail time, but he has not spent a day in prison. Those are the kind of things that encourage uh, these officers who work for INEC. Some of them are within INEC, officials of INEC, national commissioners, state commissioners. Some of them are members of political parties masquerading as INEC officials. Then there's the collusion between INEC security agents and candidates. I had a meeting with uh, the IG, we got the meeting about two weeks ago. And we all attended the meeting at political parties and background of political parties. And I said it categorically when the IG was forming like he doesn't know how reading happened. I said, you guys are the ones who win the elections, number one. Even we have found police officers that carry ballot boxes. We have found police officers who have been caught several, even on tape. And I reminded him that in 1982, it was the mobile police unit of the Nigeria police that truncated the election in the Second Republic because of their conduct of elections, particularly in the Southwest, Ondo, Oyo, uh, Ogun, and I think there's no state, where they read out outrightly people who, did, who were supposed to win the election and promoted those who. Uh, should not have won the election. So, security agents are major participants. When I was in detention, I told this to the SS man who was there, that when I was in detention, 
they came and recruited DSS officials to go to Kogi State in 2019 to read the election for Yaya Bello. I am saying this, I like mentioning names so that nobody will say she already not say who is talking about. Yaya Bello did not win the election in Kogi State. They went, some of them told me that this was to force win the election. But Yaya Bello today was rewarded with the governorship of Kogi State. Nobody people that is not vote for him. So, so sir, please, why don't people, we want to, please, please, not to interrupt me. Uh, we want to call to another person. I have to leave whatever I was doing to come here today because I thought... Oh, you are going to talk again, sir. No, no, we want no, to make it like an interaction. Let me finish. Let me finish. And I want to tell you that this is what I want to tell you. The last thing I wanted to talk about is why people don't vote. Okay. Uh, there is a loss of confidence in our democracy since 1999. In fact, before 1999, People kept trying to practice the kind of democracy that would bring about dividends of democracy. But they never come to that place where democracy meant, democracy meant anything to them. And as a result, over time, especially decent Nigerians have lost confidence in democracy and electoral politics. And politicians are very happy to understand that Nigerians no longer have interest in democracy. So they have been practicing what I have frequently referred to as morontocracy. That is government of morons, by morons and for morons. And that is why you see that during the election period, motorpark towns are more powerful than commissioners of police or states because they hold sway on election day. Even I like here will tell you what they are going through. In Ogun State, they are just burnt down an annex office. You can't just light up an office belonging to a government agency. And it's been almost three weeks now. Nobody has been arrested or identified as burning down entire annex office in a state because of morontocracy. They know them, but they are both the law, they can't touch them. And um, Corruption, and the last is violence. And I want to say categorically that if you want to divide Nigeria into six zones, every zone has its own non-state violence act. If you go to the northwest, it's complete banditry. And these bandits are not just bandits for the sake of banditry, they are controlling territory. You go to the south-south, there is militancy. They are not just militants for the sake of militants, they control territory. You go to the southeast, there is insurgency of a different kind. They are fighting to move out of Nigeria. And they also control instruments of violence and territory. They didn't bring it upon themselves, the Nigerian state, in handling that matter, brought it upon the southeast. You go to southwest. South Westerners are also engaging in a national struggle to divert themselves from Nigeria. Very soon, they will be occupying territory. The Southwest is not occupying territory against the agitators, but headsmen in the Southwest are controlling territory. If you go to the Northeast, terrorists are in charge of a good part of the northeastern part of Nigeria, up to Niger State, which is about two hours from us, have been controlled by Boko Haram. You go to the middle part of Nigeria, the middle belt, there are solid kidnappers, headsmen. It's a cocktail that is controlling territory, full of headsmen in those areas. So the question is, how do we break through and get this territory back so that people who not only want to vote, but they have enough security confidence that if they go and vote, they will vote and they will be back home safe. Those are the issues affecting Nigeria now, and nobody must underrate these issues that I've stated. Otherwise, I guarantee you the political class is very happy that, as Fela said in the 80s, people know who vote they can't get big, big numbers. That is the plan for 2023.
But as I've always wanted, something, somehow, will lead to the revolution that we're all running away from, and the continuing might be the determining factor. Thank you very much. The peace accord, accord, sign, letter to us or end the war. That is the definition of peace accord all over the world. And for any country, as contestants for the election and sign the peace accord. It means that the country has come to the realization that the election is war. The participants in this war uh, should be asked to shift their swords during the process of the election. That's simply what it means. And that's what Nigeria has demonstrated this war. And this is not the first time we've said that we've already started seeing the effects of this war, assassination and all kinds of high level threats. Uh, both offline and online uh, happening in Nigeria's election. All right, so what would be the way forward for Nigeria to get it right, looking at it as a war? Well, Nigeria has uh, been the war against Nigerians. Uh, I think the real peace accord should be between the leaders and the led, because they have waged war against us for so long. Uh, physical, spiritual, as some people like to describe it. Chemical warfare, hunger, poverty warfare. They have inflicted a lot of mental stress and physical injuries on our people. Uh, and until those kind of leaders are removed from the scene, they will continue to wage war against us. And some citizens will also start to fight back uh, the best ways they understand. All right, now looking at what by are you seeing any political will that Nigeria will stop this menace of vote by? So it has to be a number of solutions. First, you must understand that the people who you are expecting to end vote by in Nigeria today are the ones buying votes. The second aspect, which is a misconception by some Nigerians, that you can actually collect money from politicians and not vote for them. Politicians are not stupid. If you are going to take their money, you will take your blood and you don't vote for them. So, so all those who are going around this lady, just take their money, just take their money. Politicians are way too dangerous for you to collect their money. Uh, which is not their money. To collect your money and not vote for them. They've already put in place strategies to ensure that if you don't vote for them, you pay heavily for them. So the solution is to remove this kind of character from the political system. Because otherwise, you're just wasting your time. Another style of good buy that I did not mention, I didn't get is I know. They have a bunch of tools that they sell in electoral circles. They know that they have to the carry them in the land. So, if you get to the you take this 